Hello and welcome to State of the Economy. The telecom industry is in fresh turmoil. This time around because a new entrant, uh, a 20 billion uh, startup uh, called Reliance Geo has entered the market and slashed data prices by one fifth to one tenth as they claim. And for the first time, voice has been made completely free. Uh, so there's a, a sensation has been created in the markets. However, the incumbents, the telecom uh, service uh, operators, uh, the big ones like Bharti, Airtel, Vodafone, Idea, uh, even BSNL, the, the public sector company, uh, they are all now being forced to, uh, to follow suit, uh, cut prices uh, of services, data services, voice, they'll also be forced to make voice free. As a result, the telecom industry itself, uh, the stock market has taken it very badly and it is uh, indicating that the health of the industry uh, may not remain as good as it is today, ref which is reflecting in uh, stock prices of all telecom companies uh, crashing by about 5 to 10 percent. Uh, there's been some recovery uh, uh, subsequently. Even Reliance Industries Limited, which has promoted Reliance View, has, uh, saw uh, a big fall in its uh, share price, thereby indicating that the market doesn't think that RIL can sustain this, uh, this price uh, reduction, either massive price reduction. Uh, so what happens to the industry? To discuss this, uh, and to give a really balanced and objective view, uh, we thought we'll uh, we'll, we'll speak to uh, Mr. Rahul Khuller, a former uh, chairman of uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. Why we've got Mr. Rahul Khuller on the show is because he was a regulator and he, on his watch, the telecom industry saw a very orderly development, was free of controversies, was free of sensations of the kind that we are seeing now. Uh, and he has done a thorough study of where all the dynamics that that impact our industry, uh, which include uh, uh, technology, which include pricing, uh, we, uh, and what have you, which include other policy uh, uh, issues, uh, uh, and he uh, therefore we think that he's the, he's the right person to talk to us about uh, what might happen to the telecom industry going forward uh, uh, after this situation. Uh, which has got created following the entry of uh, Reliance Geo, which is being described as a $20 billion startup. Uh, welcome to our show, Mr. Rahul Khuller. So, uh, so as I said, we, we have you on the show because otherwise we are getting partisan views from all sides. So we thought that, uh, that you've been a judge, so to say, of the industry, an impartial judge and you have overseen level playing field uh, uh, in this sector. I just want to uh, have your take on how do you see uh, the, this new price war which has begun uh, and this, uh, the new dynamics that are getting created in the, indus in the industry? Uh, well, look, whenever there is a challenger to an incumbent in any industry, uh, the challenger has to come out with some USP and what Geo has done here is its USP is twofold. Uh, number one, a big splash on Geo has arrived mm -hmm. and Geo is something you are all waiting for. It's completely different from everything. So that is an... It's a different animal. That's an announcement type of effect. Mm -hmm. uh, the price uh, reduction that it has uh, effected or I mean, it is attempting to effect is to capture customers, yeah. draw customers because from existing players. From you're a challenger. What is your challenge? You have to pr compete on price and quality. Yeah. So on quality, you've already said. The whole world has been waiting for Geo to arrive. Mm -hmm. We offer you something nobody has ever done. Mm -hmm. That's one message. The second message is we will compete with these guys on price and therefore we will lower prices. So that 
coming from a challenger is to be expected. It doesn't matter whether it's the the food industry, the personal care industry, or the telecom industry. So that part of it is straightforward. Only to be expected. To be expected, and I think as 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 all of us know, competition in general in good all for industry is good. Yeah. It's always good for the uh, consumer. It always is also good for the industry because it it shakes people out of complacency and lethargy. Yeah. So I think on that score, uh, we should not be worried okay. at all about what uh, has happened here. And it is I, being welcomed by it is being welcomed, largely welcomed. People. I think I think nobody has any grudges for on that score. I think the real concerns are twofold. First is from a consumer's perspective, which is, can this price and quality be sustained? Yeah. Okay. Now, on quality, it is kind of straightforward because if I have a very large amount of spectrum and I have only a hundred customers, I can provide the best quality data and voice service. What happens is when network, when spectrum starts getting congested in terms of traffic volumes being carried by that spectrum, mm -hmm. then quality deteriorates. That quality deterioration in most cases comes in the form of either incompleted calls or very slow data transfer or a huge fall in speeds. So, which is why if you look back in history, when data started coming out of the 3G networks in 2012, mm -hmm. the l larger congested networks had a huge problem because uh, their speed delivery mm -hmm. to you and me as customers was 256K, 512KB per PS. Mm -hmm. Yes, if they did provide you higher speeds, they did charge you. And they were under law, under a uh, broadband, 512 is the standard. So what happens is that Geo today may be able to afford, say, guaranteeing uh, me that I will give you 20 Mbps. But the moment there are millions of customers, that quality cannot simply be sustained. So that's so, problem so one. quality cannot, will have to be seen. Quality has still to be as judged. It, as it scale, correct, up there. correct. Please, meaning that's what I'm saying. That I think. Okay, let me come to that later. So, quality is one thing we need to watch out. We don't watch, watch out for. The second thing is price. Now, it is perfectly in order for any competitor, any challenger, and for Geo to say, look, I will lower my prices and I will cut prices and compete with them. Fine. The point is, how long can you sustain? prices at that level. So how does the now, regulator look at that? Now, well, the regulator doesn't, well, I'll tell you the implications and then I'll come to the regulator. The implications are that, look, as you said, if $20 billion is on the line, you're talking about 140,000 crores. Now, to survive in this industry, Geo needs an EBITDA margin close to 40%. Without that, there will be virtually no return on equity and shareholders will start screaming. So the entire problem that you had opened with on stock market, shareholders, earnings per share, that whole mess starts playing itself out. Because many experts say that at least for four years there won't be any EBIT, uh, EBIT uh. Well, I, I'm meaning, as I said, I'm, I don't want to make rash judgments, but I think what I, the point I'm making is a price of zero or close to zero is not sustainable. Not sustainable. It's simply not sustainable except in the short run. Okay. And it can be managed up till December, January. Now, it's a different matter if you have very deep pockets, mm -hmm. as Reliance does. You can keep taking a loss and steep, hope to keep garnering, garnering customers. Yeah. But it's not good. And there are two reasons which why this is a, a, a bad outcome if, if this sort of price war continues. 
and that is that if we will go back to 2010 11 yeah. where there was a race to the bottom yeah. all the race to the bottom did was wiped out the financials of everybody and that time the war was between these three big gsm players and they're still recovering from that and this it has taken them four years to recover from that so as an outside observer they're all heavily debt laden today yeah yeah so as an outside observer or meaning as a regulator if i was looking at the problem yeah. i would be asking myself what is going to happen to the finances of industry as we go forward and this is not simply a regulatory question it is a question of public finance because very soon if any one of these companies goes belly up you have a huge non-performing asset in your banking system which the banking system is already grappling with and the banking system is already in trouble because of NPAs in power and steel and all sorts of About things. About 15% of their outstanding loans Correct. are and you problematic do, assets. Correct. And you do not want, under any circumstance, a spillover from the finances mm -hmm. of a hurting or ailing telecom industry to spill over into banking. Eventually, so come back at the taxpayer. Correct. Therefore, you have to watch out that you do not have a situation that I am very happy as a customer mm -hmm. because I am getting very low prices. And these guys are racing to the bottom. And in the race to the bottom, they're killing themselves. Yeah. And one fine day, mm, yeah. it doesn't matter which one goes belly up. It'll have a s it has a spillover effect. Yeah. And then it comes back to haunt me because as a taxpayer, I have to start coughing up for that. So these are, I think, things which you need to watch out for as we go. My own expectation is that within three or four months after the initial offer mm -hmm. in january geo will be compelled to raise prices of some sort okay. they will keep it marginal they will not right, try to rock the boat because they're still trying to attract customers and my guess is that right through 2017 this will happen they will compete on price mm -hmm. and on quality and they will get customers there's no doubt about it when they start crossing the 40, 50, 60 million dollar uh, customer line, that's when you need to watch on what's happening on prices. After they what's cross about 50 million customers. Yeah. Correct. When you cross 50 million, then we start talking. And when we reach 100 million, then we have to ask our question, ourselves the question, has the quality in any case suffered? Because in many cases, as the bandwidth stays the same and you keep having more and more customers as claimants on that bandwidth you have a problem so here i want to on quality uh, i want to ask you there are some studies which show that the density of uh, customers in india uh, telephone users is such that uh, that the, the voice uh, uh, or data quality uh, the transmission, etc., uh, at some point of time or the other, uh, will go kaput. Will will get affected. It's yeah. Okay. Because earlier there was one view that if if telecom companies spend enough on infrastructure, it might improve. But now there is a view that even if they improve their infrastructure, the the sheer density uh, is such that it it does affect quality. Is, is that a yeah? Uh, let me rephrase. Let me rephrase that. I think. The problem is, yes, the density of customers is, per, is very high. Mm. But the question is, what are you, density is per unit, mm. density per, you know, mm, yeah. mass per unit of volume or yeah. like that. Right. In India, what you need to be measuring is density of user per unit of spectrum. Per unit of spectrum yeah. And the problem is that in India, we have barely 40% of the spectrum. Per, per person that is available worldwide. So what's happening is one key component of your infrastructure of any wireless technology is spectrum. And when I'm working with 40% of what the rest of the world is working, then my carrying capacity is severely restricted. 
when my carrying capacity becomes restricted, then what happens is that the quality has to deteriorate. That deterioration typically is seen in more advanced societies in terms of data speeds. In India, which is basically a voice based, still largely so predominantly voice based, voice -based uh, this thing, that shows up as a deterioration of uh, voice quality over call or non completion of calls or various because the channels get congested. Now, having said that, there is one respect in de where density is. Uh, is not per unit of spectrum, but density per unit of area. And that is the comparison between a very large metro like Delhi and Mumbai as compared to much smaller, say, Mufsil towns, say, say, Aurangabad, say, Mysore. Now, when you are looking at much smaller habitations, the density on the spectrum is less. So you are, you are unlikely to encounter these sorts of problems in smaller places because the spectrum availability is still the same, the carrying capacity remains the same, but there are not so many claimants on that carrying capacity. Sir, I want to now take you to a, a, another bigger policy issue question, which is the existing telecom play, the incumbents have written to the Prime Minister's office saying that uh, uh, that the regulator, policy makers, they seem to be sh showing a bias towards the new entrant uh, in the name of, uh, well, th throwing cheap, uh, cheaper uh, services at a larger number of people in the name of uh, greater digital inclusion, etc. So the, the incumbent has uh, has uh, very nicely managed to sort of uh, project uh, uh, its own sort of expansion uh, as part of digital India. And in fact, the Prime Minister has lent his own image as uh, for the launch as, as, as a brand ambassador for uh, Reliance Geo. Now, there, is, there are apprehensions that at the level of regulation, there could be some bias. Uh, and, uh, and one area where, where they are particularly concerned, incumbents are uh, concerned is that uh, the policy does not say, the license uh, agreement does not say when does the trial run end at 5 million uh, phones or 10 million and uh, uh, because as long as the, the test run uh, continues, uh, the, in, the new entrant is not obliged to sort of pay any taxes, they are not obliged to pay license fee, not obliged to pay spectrum user charge, etc. So that is one of the concerns. Um, how do you respond to that? Yeah, let me, let me divorce the politics and the hyperbole from what I want to talk about. I think there are two separate issues in what your, 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 your talking about here. One is uh, the question, why are people alleging bias and uh, all this. Now, I think the real source of the problem is what is called the mobile termination charge. Termination. That's, that's another issue. Yeah. I forgot that to mention that, that. That is actually the core issue. The core issue, here, yeah. core issue here. See, when what happens is that when I make a phone call to you and it terminates on your system, then I am obliged to pay you a certain charge. So that's called incumbents are getting a, will get a certain charge. That's called the mobile termination charge. Yeah. The reason that exists is that we, in a calling party pay system, yeah. right? You, the receiver of the call, pay nothing. Yeah. Whereas I, the calling party, have to pay. So if that termination charge goes to zero, I can be in a situation where I pay nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Normally, a calling party pay regime is inconsistent with a mobile termination charge equal to zero because that would mean prices go to zero. Yeah. Second, whenever you have networks which are unbalanced in size, imbalanced in terms of traffic, you do not ever move to what is called MTC equal to zero. Yeah. You do not move to what is popularly now called bill and keep. Mm -hmm. 
In fact, the only country in the world which has bill and keep today is the United States. Okay. And that has not been done by regulatory fiat. It has been arrived at amongst the telco operators on their own. Because they know, the two big operators know, essentially it's 50% this way. So it's an accounting mechanism. So are we also moving towards that? Uh, right. Now, the problem is that in 2015, we looked at this matter because it had been pending since 2007 in the Supreme Court. And we started an exercise in 2014. In 2015, we lowered the mobile termination charge by 30%. And you came up with a gradual kind of regime. Correct, that that's right. Three years, My three years. And then the regulation said we will review this matter in three years. Because the real problem was that until you move to what are called next generation networks, networks. you are not anywhere there so yet. So you are given a three year kind of period. Correct. But the incumbents are now complaining that, that that's your, your that's three, three year period is also getting violated. That's, that's and everything, everything is pushed down their throats all at once. And they say that this is uh, being done to essentially to benefit, that's what their charge is, to benefit the, the new entrant. Yeah, I think that's the problem because that has been done uh, prematurely in terms of the regulator's own orders. Okay. See, the regulator issued a regulation saying we'll take it up in three years. Okay. So the question the operators are raising is why, what is the sudden so rush to why do Why is it? the new regulator advancing it? I don't talk about the new regulator or the old regulator, but... The because question you, you, is that you are the old regulator. So. Uh, why this sudden rush? Why why can't you wait your time? Out? So you're saying that that point so may be valid. This is yeah. something that needs to be sort of Finished. looked at uh, very carefully. I Meaning, this is not something that you. In fact, this is the main issue that they have written to the PMO about. Yeah, I, I I don't look. I I have not read the communications, uh, so I am. So one one another big question that I want to talk to you about. Now, this is very critical. In my view, I think this is more critical than what's what will happen to the telecom industry. Increasingly, uh, you studied this whole thing. Telecom and broadcast are merging. Tomorrow, there may not be media any media organizations left, and these these telecom uh, uh, companies, uh, which are which will become multimedia convergent, uh, will be will be media companies also. They'll be giving you news, entertainment, everything. Uh, now, Reliance Geo's business model is just that. Uh, they're claiming that, that they are not a telecom company, uh, but they are something like they'll be com they're competing with Facebook, uh, which is also turning out to be a media platform, right? So, now, how do you view regulation of telecom companies which are becoming broadcast companies? You know, like you as a telecom regulator were also in charge of broadcast, but the government is yet to put in place a separate broadcast regulation. So are we, if, if, if a telecom monopoly emerges uh, following this price war that is going on, will we also face some kind of a, a media monopoly along with telecom, which may not be good for our democracy? Would you agree with that? Yeah, well, let me put it, let me rephrase it this way. I, I doubt that India's, in comparative, India's comparative environment any big one big operator is going to emerge as a monopolist. That I don't, I don't buy that. However, it is most certainly true that with convergence, people who have put their feet in both places are likely to become dominant both in broadcasting and in telecom. So if I am a pure telecom operator and I have no broadcasting space, it's one issue. But if I am a player, which is not only a broadcaster, but supposing I am a player, I am broadcasting, I am in news, I am in business news, I control political news, all of that, and then I also say, let's say I control newspapers. Then you have a different problem, because then you are having a broadcasting problem where across di different segments of the media, be it radio, be it TV, or be it uh, television. As you, as, you, as, you, as you said, these are all converging, right? And these are all converging. And one person could own these. See, what is converged technology? At one point of time, 
I will have an instrument when I get all of this. I don't need. So, sir, uh, how do you deal with this situation? How do these how are do regulate act, this? Yeah, I think what has happened in some places is that they have moved ahead and tried to create a, a convergence converge regulator. So, for instance, in Malaysia, a uh, very good friend of mine, he is now their regulator, but he is regulator for both media and broadcasting. Okay. And convergence. And convergence. So as he as he sort of told me amusingly one day, he says, you know, Rahul, uh, I look at what's happened on the television, then I look at what's happened uh, on the telecom space, okay. uh, then I see what's happened in the newspaper, and then I see whatever has happened in the newspaper becoming coming on to me. And then suddenly what was in the newspaper has become my problem because I am a converged this thing. That so it's, is, a, it's a tricky issue. It's very, very difficult and it con pertains to two types of things. One is a technology driven convergence over which you nor I have no, any have control. No control yeah. The other is content. Now content regulation has always been separate from carriage regulation. Yeah. So the sorts but, of but regulation. Here even these would merge, right? Correct. No, the, the problem is that once everything merges, how are you going to keep content and carriage regulation separate? Okay. And have you started thinking about how you're going to do it? For instance, today on the broadcasting side, you have television. There's a regulator for that. On the media, you have the press council. Okay. These are not they essentially pertain to content regulation. On the, on the telecom side, what is it? There's nothing. If the Ministry of Home Affairs says you cannot, uh, meaning, shut down uh, usage of uh, telecom services, say, in Kashmir, yeah. or for instance... Or in Gujarat. Or in Gujarat. Or After for the instance, Hardik Patel uh, uh, Or for the, if you recall, some years ago, uh, social media was being used to stoke fires in Bangalore when people suddenly turned against people from the northeast. So overall, it really becomes. You, you need to be very careful about these things. Very very tricky terrain, very and I hope I hope we, as we go along, your warning is heeded by the authorities, and we we uh, we manage our regulation in a way that we, the diversity of media is also maintained. Thank you very much uh, for talking to us, uh, Mr. Rahul Kullar. Most pleasure definitely. having you. Most, most pleasure. That's all we have in this edition of State of the Economy. We'll be back with you next week. Thanks for watching.